Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today's part 64 of my fitness database series. You don't have to be following for fitness to learn some cool tricks for your database. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to add a quantity box for faster data entry in your Microsoft Access database. And this will work whether you are, you know, adding to a food log like we are or adding products to an order or anything like that where you're picking an item from a list and then you want to quickly type in a quantity and then hit an add button and then it adds it, right? I do this all the time in my, my full course for, um, for adding products to an order, same concept. So instead of clicking add and then hunting down the item above and then manually changing the quantity every time and then going back and adding another one, you'll just be able to punch in a number right up front and, uh, or you can double click in that yellow box there to just increment the quantity there. We're also going to simplify one of our date time functions, uh, do some quick uh, incrementing in existing items, tweak the form a little bit so it requeries and stays on the same record if you change times and a couple other tweaks. All right, couple things today. First, I did a little off camera edit. I simplified the proper log date time function. The old value did a lot of gymnastics. You know, it checked whether the log date was the same as today, and then it, it built a timestamp, and then it hunted through the table to find the most recent entry for the day and add one second to it, and blah, blah, blah. It was way more complicated than it needed to be. And the new version just takes the date from the form, right? and then adds the default food time text, which is the text up here that we got, right? And then it feeds it into this, which does that one second increment for us. So we don't need all of this. We can get rid of that, right? And this is the much more simplified, more friendly version right there. Okay, okay. Another thing that I find myself liking sometimes is like last night I had some extra raspberries. I want to be able to just quickly double click on this and increment that. So that's really easy to fix, right? Just come over here, put an on double click event in here. And we're just going to stick in here. Quantity equals quantity plus one. Me dot dirty equals false. And that one's that simple. Close it down, make sure it works. And more blueberries, you got it. Beautiful, okay. Little, it's just little simple wish list stuff that I've got that I wanna, you know, just knock it all off as much as I can. All right, next up, I wanna add a quantity to the add the log down here because what happens is, let's say I'm putting together a dinner, right? I come in here and I pick chicken, right? Let's say chicken breast, one ounce. And I don't want to add, add it four times or then have to come up here and change this to four, right? It'd be nice if there was just a little quantity box right next to that where I could then maybe like change it to four there or double click on it a few times to increment it to four. So let's do that. It's going to involve a little bit of shoehorning some code around. Let's first make some space here. I'm just going to grab one of these guys. Copy, paste, slide you over here. Get rid of that label. We'll stick it right next to it, like so. Maybe about yay big. That's a bit too big. Yeah, we're not going to put 100 in there, right? Okay, just like that. Let's call this guy. Let's Okay, let's get rid of the after update event for that. We don't need that one. I'll leave select all on there for the on click event. That's fine. Let's name this guy add quantity, A-D-D-Q-T-Y, and get rid of the control source. It's going to be unbound. Go to data. Let's make the default value one. Save it. Let's make a quick after or on double click event in here on double click. Just to make it increment. So it'll be add quantity equals add quantity plus one. Real simple. Don't need a mean dot dirty equals false after it because we're not saving it to the record. And now we got a quick little double click in here that'll increment the, the counter. Okay. Now. When it comes time to actually hit that button and add stuff, let's see what we got going on in here. It's been a minute since I've been in here. Okay. So we've got add to log food combo and then a whole bunch of other stuff. Add to log is what de decides what it is, either a food item or a meal item, and then adds it accordingly. Now, add food item to log, just a food item, if we go to definition on that one, 
we've already coded this one to take a quantity. So that's going to be easy there. So for this one, we can just come right here and pass in that add quantity because we're on the same form, right? This is all part of the food log app. It's not like it's sending it to a global variable or anything. Yeah, I could just directly grab it inside of this, but it's already a parameter and I'm happy with it the way it is. And in case I move this later on to a global you know, module so that everybody else can use it, this, uh, this works better. So with that in mind, let's also pass it into this guy. Now, this guy doesn't have any extra uh, parameters, but that's easy to do, the meal one. So we'll just tack that there. And then inside the add meal to log, go to the definition on that one. And then right here, always add it as an optional if you're adding it after the fact, because you don't know who else has to use this guy and isn't passing that parameter in. Optional quantity as a long equals one. And then right here, what we're doing here is we're getting the quantity out of the meal detail. Right, remember uh, a cup of coffee can be, you know, uh, three creamers and whatever. So we're just gonna multiply that by whatever the quantity is up here. So if I want two of those, it'll just multiply the, the, the food item in there's quantity by whatever this quantity up top here is. So we'll just say this quantity times the quantity we're sending in. And that's all you really have to do with this. Save it. And then let's give it a quick debug compile. And then the last step is after we push the button, we wanna reset this quantity back to one. So right click in here, come back into the button, and then anywhere in here, add quantity equals one, that'll reset that after you push the button, all right? Let's make sure it works. Come back in, yeah. let's go to a new day so we don't mess up my actual data. Did I mess up anything already? Let's see. Yeah, I think, well, I don't have strawberries, so I'm out of strawberries, so get rid of that. And that puts me right on target. Okay, good, let's go to here. Let's do a food item first. Let's pick the red delicious apple, add one, perfect. Let's add um, some avocado. I'm gonna double click on that one a couple times, bring it up to three and go. That works perfectly. Let's do a meal now. I can just type in meal and we'll do uh, the fruit bowl and yogurt. And I'm gonna add five of those guys. Ready, go. Perfect, look at that. Okay, and that'll save me a lot of time because I sometimes I'll go, okay, I had eight ounces of chicken, then I got to pick chicken, hit add, come up here and find it, change it to eight. It'd be easier if I could just do it right down here. I thought about making it so I could just click, keep clicking the add button and instead of adding new items up here, then it would find it if it's up here and then increment the thing. But then you got to look at the timestamp too because let's say I have yogurt for lunch and then yogurt again for the night. So then we have to look and say, okay, is it within a minute of this guy because of that seconds trick we play? It's just... It was a lot of moving parts. I started doing it that way and I'm like, oh, it's just easier to just put a quantity down here, <laughs> right? All right, one more thing I'd like to add. Um, if I change the time of something, I want this list to resort, but still stay on that item. So for example, if I change this to 11.30 PM, right? I want it to resort as if I hit the requery button, right? But stay on that item. We already know how to do some of this. Right now it works if we move it to a different day. Whoop, I didn't mean to do that. If we do this and I say, uh, let's do it to tomorrow. So that would be a 12, 10 at 4 p.m. Let's say it goes there and we're on that item. That works great. But what if it's on today's date at 4 p.m.? All right, it still does that, but only if it swaps days. If I change it now to 11 p.m., it just doesn't do anything. So let's edit that. Now that's gonna be in this guy's after update event, which is update food date time, which is right down here. We're gonna do a little rearranging with this guy because it takes a look right here and says, okay, if you've changed dates, then we're gonna do all this stuff. And then we're gonna do this, which is the, the line that, that finds it, right? And goes back to the item. But if the dates are the same, it just basically just leaves just, just kind of sitting there. So let's make a little modification to this guy. Sometimes I write this stuff and then, you know, as you're using it, you decide you want to make some changes. So let's move this ID up to the top. And we're going to get the ID right off the bat, regardless of what happens. So we're going to like right up top here, just burp. Okay. Format the field properly. That's fine. Save it. That's fine. Now we come here, if it's a different date, we're gonna go to that date 
And we're gonna move this filter, or the, uh, the, the find first, we're gonna move that outside of the if block. And this guy here, move the focus to that record. All right, that can happen regardless of what happens in here. So this just needs to, if it's a different date, go to that date. So log date equals date filter, right? I want the date value of this and then update the filter. Else, if it's the same date, what are we gonna do? Well, I wanna just requery this list. This is where a me.requery does come in handy, right? Requery it with the same date filters, it'll just resort the list. And then either way, it should put us back on the ID that we found way up top here. All right, save it, debug compile. And now if I come in here and I move this banana to 4 p.m., boom, there we go. That's what I want to happen. All right, put it back to 11.30 p.m., boom. Let's move it to tomorrow, 12.10, 5 p.m., there we go. And then back today again, this guy, and uh, 4 p.m., boom. Perfect, nice little addition there. So that's gonna do it for your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month. And yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus you get access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by accesslearningzone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.